Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of r slash tales from tech support. In today's episode. I need a second monitor for mail merge. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. I need a second monitor for mail merge. Meant to post some tales for a while, used to work IT in a call center that accepted payment for other companies. That's a bit vague enough to not get me in trouble. The whole operation was the kind of place you go into every day and are genuinely surprised they isn't a massive raid. Anyway, one of my favorite issues was a user will call Aurora, one of three administrative assistants to a director we will call Matt. And before you have any real sympathy for her, she was in her 30s and has a four-year degree for administrative assistant. Before I drive in, the IT department is a four-man team, a boss and three subordinates. Our boss has a unique background with fast food management and a two-year ITT-style computer programming degree. I have a four-year information systems and operations management degree. He is at best a good IT guy, someone you call when your system isn't working. Open a shop, build your small business a web page, get you through basic tech support. Which is what he was hired to do. And then the company grew rapidly. He managed to drop enough jargon to sound like he had subject mastery and was very pliable. A people pleaser. Someone who just wanted to come to work, fix people's problems, be liked, do his job, keep his nose down and rinse, lather, repeat until retirement. In no way was he a CIO, he didn't have the management background, the skills, the understanding, or the desire. For as much as I hated him when I left for how absolutely insane the job had become. It took a long time to look back and realize that the real issue was, he was a 20-something kid who wanted to make some money, hired to do a job and then thrown into a position he didn't want and couldn't handle and didn't know what to do. He was trapped. I tried to help him. I really, sincerely did. I accepted that I was going to effectively need to spend a large amount of effort getting him and keeping him up to speed. Trying to explain everything I had learned and put myself in a dead hole to get in a totally different four-year degree program. And he at least said as much that we were basicward. I had his job and he had mine. He was a BS and C's programmer, good, but agile in every negative connotation of that word. Not agile as in the methodology, but agile in every criticism ever leveraged against agile developers. In the sense of bang it out, make it work, don't waste time validating and documenting and move on to something else, good code documents itself. That could go into its own story, and I'm getting long-winded already. Short version, this happened while he was still accepting help, heads UPS, and hadn't checked out of the whole situation. So anyway, into the story. Aurora is tasked with sending receipts for payments if the customer has requested one. Every day she gets a file emailed to her in a delimited format. Should be a simple open in Excel, slight cleanup, save, run a mail merge. A fairly quick process. This is also at a point in which we have just gone through a major monitor swap out, CRT to LCD, and while we have a closet full of CRTs that we could have handed back out like candy, if only more than a few computers in the building supported a second monitor, of course the user wants an LCD and also has a computer that won't support a second monitor. Then came the phone call, which boiled down to hi, I need a second LCD monitor, Matt said it was okay. Okay, and why are you needing a second monitor? Mail merge, it just takes me forever to do the receipt letters with only one screen. R-I-G-H-T. Okay, I can come over to your desk and see what your process is so I can document how this will help. Matt said it was okay. I understand that, but we still need to demonstrate a business need for the expense. Ah, uh, well, I already ran the letters today, you'll have to wait until tomorrow. And I don't understand what the big deal is, Matt said it was okay, so I don't understand why you won't just get me a second monitor. But fine, whatever, see you tomorrow. Click. User is no to be a PETA, Matt is a known PETA. 
So I document carefully, send a message to my boss about the request and the plan to document the need. And bring up the most obvious question, we have a letter vendor, why are we actively printing and mailing receipts when there is a preformed letter in the system that can be requested and sent through the letter vendor? So, next morning, knowing when she gets the report, I pop over to her desk, oh, I don't have time to do those now, I have these other reports to work on. Okay, well, just give me a call when you are ready to start on those, and I'll come right over. Whole day, no call, so at 4 p.m. I call her, voicemail. Next morning, first thing, call her. Hey, what happened? I thought you were going to call me when you were going to run letters. Oh, I told Matt what you said, and that I really just couldn't do them since you wouldn't get me a monitor. He said he'd take it up with your boss during the staff meeting. Oh, okay. Thanks for letting me know. Grumble, grumble, grumble. Emailed my boss a heads up, included a quote for the second monitor and a new computer, as hers was a bit of a clunker, not a bad machine, but very low spec, older, but more than enough for her job description, and adding a dual display video card would have been a bit pointless, sort of like a pimp my ride where the car is shot, but they add in a bunch of cool tech. Got the expected WTF? Thanks for the heads up. Staff meeting occurs, I find out later that before it could even start, Matt began screaming at my boss that I refused to help Aurora and now she can't do her job. Boss is able to fire back with a total of equipment needed, and that we were trying to simply document the business need, which she had refused, in order to justify the expense. And that, furthermore, we were a bit confused about why this issue was an issue, as not only should she not need a second monitor to do that, but that he couldn't understand in the first place how this was a task she performed anyway. Why aren't we requesting the letter in the system with every other letter? Q hot-headed curse-laden rant from Matt about how stupid and useless IT was, how his department makes all the money we were so worried about spending, and how utterly ridiculous it was to have to fight to get a stupid monitor from us given how much money was wasted by IT. Basically this was how every staff meeting went, what should have been a couple hours, ended up being an all-day boxing match. Each department head trying to find someone else to blame, or trying to disappear into the carpet. Save Matt, the undisputed champion of blame and shame. Ultimately, Aurora is told to call us the next time she runs letters so stupid IT can fill out a form and check a box or whatever. So she does, I go over. She. Is. Not. Doing. A. Mail. Merge. She, opening the file in Excel, is taking a letter saved in one file and creating a new document, hand counting rows in Excel, I wish I were kidding, copying, and then pasting her saved template mail merge letter into the new document until she has as many pages as her count. Then she goes through, manually changing the date on each letter, and hand retyping every single bit of the file data into the letter clicking back and forth between Word and Excel to do so. First name, last name, address line 1, address line 2, city, state, zip, our account number, client name, client account number, first name, last name for greeting, account previous balance, payment amount, account balance. Four hundreds of letters. Then deleting one of three paragraphs and copying and pasting account balance again if necessary, Paragraphs are effectively your account is paid in full, your account was paid in settlement, your account has a balance remaining. Did I mention, hundreds of letters? Then going back through and manually typing Mr. Slash MRS for the name prefix. Again, for those in the back, for hundreds of letters. And by best guess, the prefix wasn't in the file she received. Kim is a MRS, Sam is a MR, and Dinesha or Rudra is whatever she felt like. You get the idea, she's just randomly getting it right or wrong, and not caring. Then printing them out, not on company letterhead, not even the cheap stuff we had for the times that we needed to send an official letter, but not in a fine letterhead needed way, but instead on plain white paper, so no return address or any indication the receipt wasn't something someone just typed up on their own computer. Then hand folding them, despite the one-third folding machine. Then she took the stack and hand-typed Avery-style address labels. 1. At. A. Time. 
running a 30-up sheet of labels through the laser printer 30 times. Four hundreds of labels. Labeling each envelope as she went. One run for the return address, one for the mailing address. Oh yes, you read that correctly. She didn't grab the nice pre-printed company envelopes, she didn't grab the cheap company pre-printed envelopes, she didn't use the windowed statement envelopes and just adjust her letter format to show the information in the windows, she used plain white envelopes. Then postage metered them, all of them. Leaving them unsealed. Why oh why unsealed you ask? Because then they were put on Matt's desk for review. Because Matt thought it was ridiculous and wasteful to send letters unless they were warranted. What was warranted, well, that was up to him to decide. Some customers got a letter for every payment, some only for final payments, some never got a letter. So he went through and whittled the stack down from hundreds of letters to whatever he thought was appropriate. Trashed the unwarranted letters and envelopes, and handed the warranted letters back to Aurora who promptly taped the return letter shut and left for the post office at 3.45 p.m. Dropped the mail off before collection and then went and ran any other errands that he needed her to run, eventually getting back to the office at some point after 5 p.m. And if you haven't caught it yet, he never noticed they had already been run through the postage machine, so the postage he thought he was saving the company was literally being thrown away. Not to mention this task was about 80% of her day. And we were paying her mileage for using her personal vehicle to go to the post office, separate from the other employee who also went to the post office and collected mileage. And we were ending up paying her overtime because she didn't clock out until 5.30 to 6 p.m. I asked for the criteria Matt was using to choose warranted versus unwarranted letters. Never heard back. I modified the file she received, adding a field to generate a letter type for the three paragraphs selection, created a proper mail merge template in two formats, one for window envelope and one for cheap company pre-printed envelope, including conditional statements to parse the letter type field and include the appropriate paragraph, made a proper label printing template for use on the cheap company pre-print envelope so label sheets, except when reused due to partial prints, would run. Through the printer just once, so much explained about why her printer needed a maintenance kit all the time, pointed out that there was a machine to fold the letters, explained to her, shock slash horror slash surprise slash amusement, that no, just because you don't put a metered letter in the mail, that doesn't mean the postage wasn't used, but like it's a barcode, don't they like have to scan it to charge us? I literally made it near idiot proof to do her job. I made it take a few minutes instead of her whole day. And what, oh what do you think this got me? A thank you, a pat on the back, high fives, appreciation for saving the company money, brownie points. No. It got me told to order her a new computer, two brand new monitors, and tasked with fixing the file she received, setting up her new computer and monitors, and told to never do that again. You see, Matt didn't appreciate that I dared to ask about his warranted versus unwarranted criteria, found it completely inappropriate that I would tell his employee how to do her job, was absolutely foaming at the mouth by the time he got to the sheer incompetence of my comment about postage, virtually murderous that I had the audacity to suggest anything about his processes that I so clearly was too stupid to understand, using letter vendor, and filled with righteous fury that I should be. Fired immediately for insubordination. My boss, blindsided, saw the writing on the wall. He either gets what he wants or this becomes a never-ending war. So, she got her second monitor, a new computer for it, a fixed file, a ton more maintenance kits for her printer, and to keep doing what she was doing. And I got to keep my job. While effectively wearing a target on my back and walking through a gun range.